This episode surprised me quite a bit. It was actually Mob handing out lessons and it was Reagan giving out the hands, boy! No, but really, this episode um, did surprise me. It surprised me in two ways. Firstly, these have had to been some of the most beautifully choreographed and animated fight sequences I have seen. Like, I won't even get into how well they handled and capitalized off of Shimazaki's teleportation ability. And secondly, in the midst of all this chaos, in the midst of this family turmoil, in an episode that was so beautifully produced with the fights and the stellar animation, they still managed to fit in a lot of character moments. And to me, character moments are always the most important and entertaining aspect of a series, let alone an episode. And the fact that this episode was filled with them, regardless of the time given or general importance of said character moments, it gives us a lot to look into and analyze. However, what I feel is most important to understand now is something I mentioned last week, and that's the dynamic of the relationship between Toichiro and Serizawa, and just how much it foils Reagan's and Mob's relationship. And through some speculation and individual character moments this episode, not only can we get a better understanding of that, but I also think we can sort of solidify how some events may take place. For example, I had thought that Mob would eventually have to face Serizawa, a version of himself that, due to his growth this season, he has avoided becoming. And that confrontation, as we saw in the post credit scene, will be taking place. In addition to that, I also thought that Mob would be able to relate to Serizawa in some way, and speak Serizawa out of this deep admiration he has for his master. As Mob himself not only has experience with giving his master's words too much power, but he also knows what it feels like to be used. However, after seeing this episode, I think Mob will try. He'll try relating to Serizawa, and he'll try to speak some sense into him, but he'll fail. Though it won't be due to Mob being unable to get his message across. Surprisingly, Mob has been able to gather all the good things Reagan has taught him and is actually quite good at getting his message across as we saw earlier on in the episode. I think this failure will have a lot more to do with Serizawa's unwillingness to believe that someone can relate to him, which is surprisingly one of my biggest issues with Mob as well, or at least it was. Earlier on in the season especially, we saw how Mob was harboring, or at least developed a lot of conflicting emotions. Episode 3 of this season specifically comes to mind. And I was upset with Mob because we know he has psychic buddies like Hanazawa and even Ritsu who can see spirits, can exercise them but choose not to, and who can essentially offer a word or two of advice or at least lend an ear. But at the time, Mob was still stuck to Reagan. He still hadn't realized that he didn't have to rely solely on Reagan. And also, Mob spoke truthfully by saying that he was in a rather unique position as he chose to involve himself as much with spirits as he did with humans. Mob thought his worldview was rather unique up until he met Mogami Keiji the episode right after. Somebody who was able to understand the conflicting emotions Mob possessed, and although contrary to Mob's beliefs, was able to offer some insights and advice like he did in this episode as well. I think Serizawa thinks his situation or worldview is rather unique, but in actuality, Mob has quite the understanding of it. I think Serizawa's undying and blind loyalty to Toichiro will be the main reason Mob will not be able to essentially inspire change in Serizawa like he did in Minagishi. Mogami himself said it this episode, there are some things kindness can't change and if we keep going down that line of thought, there are people whose beliefs are so ingrained, so a part of their person that 
there's absolutely no chance you can change them. And I believe that's a reference to Serizawa and to Toichiro, someone who spent the last 20 years convincing himself that world domination is in fact not a childish dream but obtainable and now it's so close within his grasp that he's willing to toss aside his son to fulfill a goal 20 years in the making. It is necessary at times to be harsh with people and as much as Mob would like to avoid playing with knives or using his psychic powers to harm others, words are completely useless if a person isn't willing to listen. I don't think it's wrong for me to assume that there will soon come a time where Mob will have to resort to using a significant amount of violence to the point where he's caused quite a bit of destruction similar to like what he's done and has felt disappointed about before. And while Mob might not want to believe it, he's going to have to convince himself that it was the only way. And I'm ridiculously curious to see if Mob has developed or grown to the point where he can convince himself of that. In addition to that though, there were some other little things I really loved about this episode. Again, having to do with characters and their growth. I was really happy to see Ritsu come to this realization that it wasn't his brother's psychic powers which he admired, it was actually his tenacity, passion, and wholehearted devotion to becoming a better version of himself. What makes Mob special isn't his psychic powers, his psychic powers were simply the catalyst to all of this growth Mob seeks to obtain. And the fact that Ritsu realizes this now makes me really happy as it puts even less importance on Mob's psychic abilities. And quite honestly, I'm a huge fan of any time Hanazawa is able to flex his development and essentially quote everything Mob made him realize to other psychics. It's indicative of not only his growth as a person but as an esper, how he was once so full of himself and high and mighty but is now adapting, learning from his opponents and using their abilities. Hanazawa went from being this holier than thou type character to a character that like I said learns from his opponents which in a way is the highest form of flattery. So yeah, this episode was amazing in every sense of the word. I hate and love at the same time how every episode of Mob feels like THE episode because this is not THE episode, we have two more. So I can't wait to see what this series has in store for us next week. But hey, will Mob's discussion with Serizawa go as bad as I think it will? Will the gunman, Reagan, pick up another KO? If you're an anime only, let me know any of the thoughts you had throughout the episode. If you're a manga reader, let me know how you felt Bones adapted this episode. What were your favorite moments? Did they do the fights justice? Was there anything you didn't like? And most importantly, start a discussion. Let me know if you agree or disagree with my analysis on this episode and its characters. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, it helps the channel out a lot. Also feel free to subscribe and to hit that bell. That way you don't miss a video and can continue watching Mob Psycho 100 and many other series with me. And with that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all soon. Bye bye.